So remember in the last video, I told you that the Smart Object uh, doesn't have all the editing features as a traditional rasterized layer. You'll find that some of the things that you have done before aren't available. For example, under the filters, uh, certain ones are just grayed out, like Liquify, Vanishing Point. And under Blur, the Lens Blur is in, not allowed to be used on a Smart Object layer. If I switch to another layer, you'll see that those objects or those items already come back. That's because smart objects have some limitations. Now each limitation is getting, um, I guess the limitations are getting fewer the more latest version of Photoshop you're using, um, but there'll always be some limitations. Another big thing that tends to, uh, I guess, mess up students as they're working with this is they'll go to try and erase on a smart object and they'll, they might not notice that there's a no symbol coming up and they'll go to erase and they'll just say, oh wow, there's a pop-up, I'll click OK. Well, what just happened? Well, what happened was you just converted or rasterized your smart object back into a traditional layer, meaning it's, you know, not cool anymore. It doesn't do the smart object things. So. I want you to be aware of uh, doing certain things and watching for those dialog boxes. I'm going to step backward using um, Control Alt Z and I'm going to do that again. I want you to see what the message says. It says this smart object must be rasterized before proceeding. Edit contents will no longer be available. You want to rasterize the smart object? Well, like I said, don't click OK, click cancel. Read those things because you don't want to uh, mess up a smart object. Let's say you actually did want to remove part of it or change the colors on part of it. What you'd have to do is edit the contents of this smart object. It's kind of like going inside the file that originally made it. Now I'm going to right click on the layer and you'll see that there's this thing called edit contents. Now that's only if you right click in the blue area. and Edit contents will then open up the original program that made it. So if it was a, uh, a Photoshop based smart object, it would open up another Photoshop window. But in our case, this is an Illustrator document, so it's going to open it up inside of Illustrator. Now it's going to warn you this little message after editing the contents, choose File, Save to Commit the changes. Those changes will be reflected upon returning to this PSD document. So make sure it's saved to the same location, all right? So anyway, we're going to head and go ahead and hit OK. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, choose this discard changes. It might not come up for you. But anyway, when it comes back into Illustrator here, I have all these little shapes that have created this document. I can make some changes to those shapes. For example, I can click on this inner circle here and I can go to the gradient panel and maybe I want to change one of these to a different color. So let's see. Yeah and we'll just go crazy and make a couple different colors here and then maybe I want to adjust the star here to be a little brighter um, so we'll take this in a little bit more and make it a little brighter so now you can see I've changed my uh, object a lot and the file name right here is called vector smart object one dot AI and that's just because uh, the name is not always preserved and so uh, sometimes you'll get a different file name I'm just going to click the X button, which will prompt me to save. And I'm going to go ahead and yes, save it. And now I can just stay here inside Illustrator, but when I return to Photoshop, you notice that the changes have been made. So I all the different things that I've done have been reflected. Okay, so I can um, go into Illustrator, make a change, and come back. This is really good if you've set up this uh, complex structure and you just want to make one little change even if you've used it multiple times. Uh, for example, I'm going to uh, copy the this. Now I could do a new smart object via copy, but I'm just going to duplicate this layer here. So now I have two of them. And this second one here, I'm going to pull this out. Uh, I'm going to call this one well, this one here we'll just leave copy, but then I'm going to do a new smart object via copy. So now this one here is a new smart object. Now you might be thinking that, hey, all three of these are the same. And they are, but these first two are based upon the same smart object. So watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to take the first one and lower it down some. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off my original sun rasterized layer. 
And then I'm going to take my new one here. I'm going to put it over here on the left. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to one of these here and I'm going to edit the contents again. It's going to prompt me again. I'm going to go back into Illustrator again. Well, this time I'm going to make this just completely different. Let's see. Um, all right, and there we go. So that's obviously that's a different file. I won't get that confused. I'm going to go ahead and hit X and yes, make it save. I'm going to return to Photoshop. And notice these two changed, but why didn't this one? Well, that's because for this one, this top one, it created a completely new smart object embed. So the neat thing about this is if you had a whole bunch of copies of something, and you could just change one of them, and it would change any duplicated, duplicated layer. And when you don't want that, you could just use this... Uh, smart object via copy, new smart object via copy to create a completely separate one that you'd have to edit on its own. So anyway, that's the way you can edit smart objects and check them out inside the original program. In the next video, we're going to take a look at what happens when we have a Photoshop based smart object.